Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Dr. Biden, accompanied by the Vice President of the United States and Ambassador Tai. Thank you, and welcome to the White House. It's wonderful to see so many friends here today. Uh, as you may know, I teach writing, and in my classes, we often talk about how the stories we tell shape our identity. They can isolate us and make us afraid. They can make us angry or even forgetful, relegating some of it to the footnotes of history. But stories can inspire us to kindness as well. They can remind us that our differences are precious and our similarities infinite. That our community, our country, is capable of beautiful and powerful things. So what story can we tell about this community? Well, there isn't just one. Not one country of origin or path to America. Not one language, religion, or set of traditions. Not one struggle or movement for justice, but many. This community is as diverse as the flowers of the Philippines, as rich as the silk of a kimono, and as beautiful as the colors of the Festival of Holy. You come from immigrants and pioneers and tribes that have called our country home long before there even was a United States. Your voices have crafted our laws and dismantled injustice, penned our poetry and painted our dreams, taught our children and pushed the frontiers of our future. But while you may come from different backgrounds, there are common threads that unite Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders. The strength to overcome racism and adversity. The generosity and grace that moves you to hold on to old traditions and create new ones. The creativity to, that drives you to shape our art and technology and culture for yourselves and for our next generation. The courage to lift up your voices and build better communities for us all. You have no one story, but millions, and all of them matter. Individual by individual, your experiences show us the complex beauty of our people, and together, you bring harmony and strength to our entire nation. So may I say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And now it is my honor to introduce our United States Trade Representative, Ambassador Tai. Ambassador? Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Biden, for that very kind introduction. It is a great honor to be at the White House today as we celebrate Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. This month is about celebrating the contributions our families, friends, and leaders have made throughout this country's history. But it is also a time to reflect on the challenges that our communities are facing, especially in recent years. Just two days before I was sworn in, a gunman in Atlanta killed eight people, six of whom were Asian women. President Biden and Vice President Harris immediately went to Atlanta. They met with local AA and NHPI leaders to show our administration's support in the face of this tragedy. A year ago, President Biden signed an executive order to establish the White House Initiative on Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders. 
I am proud to co-chair this initiative, which brings together stakeholders and local leaders to advance equity, justice, and opportunity. This complements our work at USTR to advance an inclusive, worker-centered trade agenda that aims to deliver prosperity for all. As I've traveled the country and around the world to carry out the President's trade agenda, I've made a point to sit down with local AA and NHPI leaders along the way. I am continually inspired by the resilience and perseverance that our communities have shown in the face of increased hate, violence, and discrimination. We are standing up and fighting for a better future. Helping to lead this fight is a true role model, our first Asian American Vice President, Kamala Harris. One of my fondest memories is meeting with Vice President Harris in her office just before she swore me in as the first Asian American US trade representative. I was with my husband and my mother. That day also happened to be my birthday. So Vice President Harris congratulated me and then also wished me a happy birthday. She then turned to my mother and said, happy birthday to you as well. <laughs> my mother responded enthusiastically and said, thank you. You know, in Asian cultures, you wish the mother a happy birthday because she said, I did all the work on the day that she was born. The vice president winked at her and said, oh, I know. I am so proud to represent our AA and NHPI communities in this cabinet alongside our vice president. And so it is with great pride that I introduce to all of you this afternoon, the vice president of the United States of America, Kamala Harris. Thank you, Ambassador Tai. It is true. It is, there is something we all know, it, that it, we must always honor the mothers, the aunties, the chittis, all of them. <laughs> and of course, the husbands and the fathers and the grandfathers. Um, it is good to be with everyone. I think this is, Mr. President, one of the biggest groups that we've had since we've been in office, and it's quite an, a beautiful sight to see. So good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon. And as you all know, my mother arrived in the United States at the age of 19 from India. And when I think about the work that we are all doing, the work we are doing as an administration led by our president, in terms of not only living the values, but standing on the shoulders of so many who imagined that we would all be here, and who know that when we talk about the beauty of who we are as a nation, as the United States of America, it is represented by all of the people who are here today and all those who are proud that we stand here today together. President Joe Biden, Dr. Jill Biden, Mr. Second Gentleman, uh, <laughs> and members of our cabinet, it is good again to be gathered with all of you today and to be joined by the members of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus. As a former member of the caucus, I will take a few moments to talk about a friend, to so many of us, a mentor to so many of us, one who helped found KPAC and became its first chair. And of course, I am talking about the amazing secretary, Norman Mineta, who devoted his career to public service. For all of those who knew Norm, he worked tirelessly to make our nation stronger, safer, and more just. And in so doing, he inspired a generation of leaders, including me. Secretary Mineta's family is here with us today. And from my family to yours, please know that he is deeply missed. Today, yes, it is a great celebration for so many reasons, of so many things. But it is also impossible to ignore that we gather mere days 
after a horrific act of hate in Buffalo, New York, targeting black Americans. And you know, it was only last year, as the ambassador said, only last year that we, that I was with the president in Atlanta, mourning the murder of eight people, including six who were Asian American women. And sadly, what I said then remains true now. Racism is real in America. It has always been. Xenophobia is real in America. It has always been. Sexism, too. I said last year, and I sadly say again today, we have had people in positions of incredible power in our country, scapegoating. People with the biggest pulpits spreading this kind of hate. This requires these moments, sadly, tragically, require us to ask, who are we as a nation and what do we stand for? It is yet again a moment to remember and talk about and reflect on how we treat people and do we live to the greatest and best of our ideals, which means treating people, all people, with dignity and respect, remembering the history of our nation and who built our nation, and honoring the diversity of all who have contributed to who we are today. And of course, that is what this month requires us to do. And I know looking around at the leaders here, we remember it every day of the year. And we also know in tragic moments like this that we are committed collectively to saying a harm against any one of us is a harm against all of us, and it is a harm against our nation. And the President and I, and all of us, as leaders, will not be silent. We will not stand by. We must always speak out against violence, against hate crime and discrimination, whenever and wherever it occurs. And we must do everything in our power to end this epidemic of hate. We feel great pride based on good reason and fact in history, in what we celebrate today. And we know that those who allowed us to be here and paved the path for us to be present at this moment expect great things from us, including that we are not only clear-eyed, but that we are optimistic about our future collectively, about our future as a nation. That we remain committed to the ideals that make this nation great. That we remain committed to the notion that a harm against any one of us is a harm against all of us. But that is an extension of a most profound belief, which is that we are in this together as one nation, undivided. So today, we celebrate all those ideals when we celebrate the great people of this nation who have paved a path for so many of us to be where we are today. And finally, to quote then a great American, Normanetta, I quote, if we will act together then we are strong enough to withstand any evil, internal or external, that threatens to unravel, and this is key, this beautiful tapestry that is America. And now it is my great honor to introduce a man who ran for president because he knows that no one should be in this fight alone. President Joe Biden.
You gotta admit, I have good taste in picking people, don't you? <laughs> Way above my pay grade. <clears throat> Kamala, thank you. And Ambassador Ty, Doug, the second gentleman out there hiding behind everybody out there, I know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, Jill and I are honored to welcome all of you here to celebrate the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander Heritage Month here in the Rose Garden. You know, it's wonderful to see so many friends. U.S. Senator Maisie Haran. Where's, where's Maisie? I see, stole she's here. I'm looking. <laughs> Maisie, wherever you are, you're the best. And Tammy Duckworth. Tammy, Tammy's here, I'm told, or going to be here. No? At any rate. And uh, the chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, Representative Judy Chu, is here as well. And uh, several other representatives here today who represent a community in Congress that is growing each election. As Catherine mentioned, I'm proud to have reestablished the White House Initiative on Asian American, Native American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islanders. Several members are here today, along with members of the community across the administration at every level. Also joining are mayors and local leaders, leaders of business and philanthropy, leaders of civil rights, the arts, the fashions, culture. And this is the reception that follows uh, on the, uh, the great honor Jill and I, Kamala and Doug, had in hosting Team USA, uh, including the, Ameri the Asian American athletes who so honorably represented America in the Olympics. Not too long ago, that included one of the most decorated, the, the most decorated figure skater in U.S. history, and also worked on my campaign, also worked on my campaign, and is now my nominee to be ambassador to Belize. Michelle Kwan. Michelle, you're the best, kid. You're the best. You do things backward better than most people can do them forward. <laughs> and you represent a simple truth. There is no single Asian, as Jill pointed out much more articulately than I have, a, there's no single Asian American, Native Hawaiian, or Pacific Islander identity. It doesn't exist. The diversity of cultures, the breadth and achievement that has shaded and shaped so many, strengthened the fabric of this country in ways that you can't measure. I don't think, I don't know how you can measure it. The fastest growing demographic in the United States, it has also gotten us through the pandemic as frontline and essential workers. And you've powered our economic recovery. An unemployment rate in the community that's fallen from 6.6 percent since we got in office to 3.1 percent for Asian Americans. Entrepreneurships in the community has risen, with you all, has risen the fastest rate in over a decade. Where members of the community were once tokenized as villains in the movie screens, you now light them up as superheroes. And today, I'll be traveling to, uh, on Thursday, excuse me, I'll be traveling to the Republic of Korea and Japan to affirm the importance of our Indo Pacific alliances. Folks, and to celebrate the indispensable partnerships that are strengthening by the deep family ties and heritage and the values reflected in the AANHPI, I, 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 <laughs> community here in the United States. As they say in Claymont, Delaware, all you guys. Uh, <laughs> but look, we know that for generations of progress, racism, harassment, and hate crimes persist, as was pointed out by my friends behind me. And today we know that maybe uh, you are one, one of them who don't feel safe walking in American streets. A shooting near Atlanta a year ago is still fresh, has been mentioned, in the hearts of so many. And Kamala and I went to vi down to visit. Just as we've seen hate crime shootings in Orange County, California, Dallas, Texas, just last week. Jill and I just got back from Buffalo, Buffalo, New York, where another lone gunman with a hate-filled soul shot and killed black people at a grocery store on a Saturday afternoon. You know, I probably shouldn't be saying this now, but I'm going to say it anyway. We have to not only talk about how we're going to end the hate, but who's responsible for generating it? Who's responsible for generating it? Look, I've said many times, hate can have no safe harbor in America. And every person deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. But you know, you have folks on television stations talking about the replacement theory, scaring the living hell out of people who don't have a whole lot of emotional stability, taking advantage of 
on the Internet and other means by talking about how we're going to be overtaken. That's why one year ago, with the help of many of you, I signed into law the Bipartisan COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act. And with your continued help, uh, with your continued help, our commitment to advance equality across the board in everything from health care to education to housing to LGBTQ rights. Look, we're working to fix our immigration system to reflect our values and the truth that legal immigration defines who we are as a nation. Who we are as a nation. That's why we're so darn strong. Bottom line is we're doing the work to make real the promise of America for every American. A promise that holds every person is created equal and deserves to be treated equally throughout their lives. We've never fully lived up to that promise, but we've never, ever before walked away from it. We've never walked away from it. And that's what we acknowledge during this month, building a legacy of strength and resilience for people like you and almost all of our forebears. You know, you were telling the story. Jill was going to get mad at me for reminding me. I happen to be Irish. <laughs> That's the problem sometimes with Jill. But I'm only joking. That's not true. No, I'm, I, I'm teasing. But my mother used to always say, on birthdays, the mother should get the gift, not the child. So I didn't realize it was both Asian and Irish, but <laughs> at least in my house. <laughs> and speaking of friends, the late Normanetta, whom Kamala just spoke about, was one of my close friends, for real. As you all know, Norm was born in 1931 in San Jose, California, an immigrant to immigrant parents from Japan. As an 11-year-old, he spent three years in an incarceration camp among 120,000 Japanese Americans across the country. But with every reason to be angry and resentful, with every reason to be angry and resentful, Norm chose to believe in himself to believe in America, and to believe in his country. He served in the United States Army, elected the first Asian-American mayor of a major city, his hometown, San Jose, elected and served two decades as a congressman. We were — we spent a lot of time together and traveled together, serving with pioneers and dear friends like Danny Inouye and Danny Akaka. They both taught me, by the way, not only about Asian-Americans, they taught me that it is Native Americans not Indian tribes, Native Americans. And Danny was the first guy — I don't want to ruin his reputation, God bless his soul — but Danny was the first guy to convince me to run for president and be my national campaign chairman. Then Norm became the first American of Asian descent to serve in a, as a cabinet secretary. Norm passed away earlier this month, as we all know, days after I signed a bill in law naming the U.S. Department of Transportation headquarters in his honor. Today, we're honored to be joined by two of his sons, David and Bob. Where are you guys? Come up here. Come on. You're a good man. You're both good men. Thank you very, very much. And I want to tell you, he was one hell of a man. So let's all follow the power of Norm's example. I thank you all for being here, and I want you to enjoy the rest of your session. Remember, though, this fight that we're for equality, we're just starting here. It's not just the wackos who go out there with those guns and get talked into doing something. It's the people who fill their brains with false ideas. It's the people who make them, convince them for their power and their prestige and their money to be able to go out and do these terrible things. That's not who we are. That's not who we are. And I'll be darned, as long as I'm President of the United States, I'm going to fight like hell, and we're going to expose everybody. We've got to make sure that this — in my — you know, there's a there, — there's a, a, a hymn in my — based on the 91st Psalm, and it says in my church, may he raise you up in eagle's wings and bear you on the breath of dawn, and let the sun shine upon you until — and then he goes on to talk about that we all, all to God will hold you in the palm of his hand. That's how we got to think about our fellow Americans. The reason we are strong, the reason we're who we are, is because we're diverse with so many talents, so many. I know this group will never forget it, but I'm going to spend the rest of my term, and as long as I'm in office, reminding the rest of America they should understand it, too. God bless you all. Enjoy the night today, and thank you very much.